Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Nancy, and I'm here live at Memory Lane Care Services. And today we're going to be talking about a beautiful national park called Yellowstone. And I'm going to show some pictures of postcards. Um, I've actually visited there myself with my family when my children were younger, and it was absolutely beautiful. We took a camper, and we had a great time. So I have great memories of Yellowstone. Um, I want us to start off with a poem. It's called Under Yellowstone's Skies. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to show you a picture just to give you an idea. How beautiful. You see how the sky's in the clouds? All right, I'm going to read this. Your mouth will often gape when witnessing the timeless Wyoming landscape. Magnificent mountains, canyons, forests, waterfalls, geysers, and lakes reduce any heartaches. You will wonder at the majesty of it all, stupendous lower Yellowstone Falls, twice the height of Niagara. The park has trails galore. Don't forget your camera. Marvel at the grand geysers thundering over a hundred feet high. Don't let famous Old Faithful pass you by. Step no further if animals are your cup of tea. Countless birds sing from the trees, bison, wolves, and bouncy bears roaming free. Spot an eagle eyeing a screaming marmot a quiver, or a moose crossing a gurgling river. Pronghorn antelope sprinting quick as a flash, beavers and otters playfully making a splash. Took millions of years to create such a feast for your eyes. Live better, humbler lives. Be refreshed and inspired under Yellowstone skies. And then there's another poem here. It's called, entitled Yellowstone. Untouched, unspoiled, unfiltered. May it be and forever stay. It's cool winds gliding from high skies to watch old faithful play. To younger generations, leaving a place transcending time. Where bison thrive, still roaming free towards their upward climb. Sky colors, sky's colors form a looking glass to adorn a rainbow maze. Shyly peek through puffy clouds, a soft translucent glaze. Waterfalls crash from mountains high, bring showers and mist around. Awed, transfixed, at loss we stand above earth's holy ground. Majestic rivers snaking, spruces swaying with the breeze. Above tall mountains, eagles glide as easy as they please. All right, so we're going to get into talking about Yellowstone. This is actually called glamping in Yellowstone, which is like camping in Yellowstone, only a little nicer. Um, so here we go. Having passed that time in their lives when living in a tent with a sleeping bag for a bed would be considered pleasurable, the front porch travelers decided to explore glamping opportunities in Yellowstone National Park. If you're not familiar with the term glamping, let me explain. It's a blended word for glamorous camping, and it lives up to its name. Glamping is the best of both worlds. All the amenities of the upscale hotel situated in a tent um, is um, all the amenities of an upscale hotel. They're situated in a tent in the great outdoors. Come join the front porchers as they explore the world's oldest national park while enjoying the comforts of home. <clears throat> So Yellowstone National Park was established on March 1st, 1872. Native Americans had lived in the area for approximately 11,000 years before the introduction of outsiders. There were four original Native American tribes in the Yellowstone region. There were the Crows, the Blackfoot, the Bannocks, and the Shoshone. However, more than 226 tribes claim an ancestral connection. Politicians who sought to create the park claimed that no tribes lived in the immediate area because of their fear of an evil spirit residing in the geysers and the hot springs. However, such claims are contradicted by the more than 1,600 tribal culture sites located within the boundaries of the park. 
The indigenous name for the area was Burning Mountains. Only the Shoshines are noted to have lived at the highest altitudes, but many other tribes hunted the land in the summer. When the indigenous people came and went freely through the area, only a few hardy mountain men ventured forth into the wilderness, hurt hunting and trapping the plentiful wildlife. Then, in 1806, a man by the name of John Coulter, a member of the Lewis and Clark expedition, he left to join a group of fur trappers. He became a friend of the Crows, and he fought with them against their enemy, the Blackfeet. Ever restless, Coulter left the troop trappers in 1807 and passed through what would later become part of the park. During that winter, he observed the geothermal area, which he described as a place of fire and brimstone. The people didn't believe him, and they dismissed his reports as delirium. They nicknamed this imaginary place Coulter's Hell. And even though over the next 40 years or so, others described similar curiosities, such as boiling mud and steaming rivers, people continued to believe these reports to be nothing more than myths and tall tales. In 1856, while on an expedition, mountain man Jim Bridger reported seeing boiling springs and spouting waters and a mountain of glass and rock. Bridger was known to be a spinner of yarns, and so his reports, like Coulter's, were largely ignored. Because of the American Civil War, further explorations of this area were put on hold, and it wasn't until late 1869 that the first organized expedition occurred. That expedition, consisting of explorers Cook, Folsom, and Peterson, followed the Yellowstone River to Yellowstone Lake. The information they reported generated the interest of a group of Montana residents who, in 1870, formed the washburn langford Doan Expedition. The Washburn Party is credited with discovering Yellowstone and for giving the name Old Faithful to the geyser that we know and love today. A man by the name of Truman C. Everts joined the expedition but became separated from his party during a snowstorm. He met more than a few dangers and was even stalked by a mountain lion at one point. His friends offered a reward to anyone who could find his remains, as they had no hope for his survival. He was found by two mountain men after 37 days, and he was near death and reportedly weighed about 50 pounds. But fortunately, he lived to tell his tale. Yellowstone's Mount Everts is named after him. In 1871, Ferdinand V. Hayden, the head of the U.S. government's new geological survey team, was appointed by Congress to make an official exploration of the area. Accompanying his team of geologists, botanists, and zoologists were artist Thomas Morin and photographer, photographer William H. Jackson. The country was stunned by the natural beauty of Yellowstone. They were able to capture, and soon, after lobbying began, they made it a national park. On March 1, 1872, President Ulysses S. Grant established Yellowstone as the world's first national park. The U.S. Army was commissioned to oversee the management of Yellowstone and did so from 1886 to 1916 a period of 30 years. In 1917, the administration of the park was transferred to the National Park Service, which has been newly created, which was had been newly created the previous year. Since then, more than 1800 archaeological sites have been identified and examined by researchers. Hundreds of structures with historical and architectural significance has been built and carefully preserved to the delight of more than 3 million tourists on an average every year, with a peak of 4.26 million visitors recorded in 2016. So I imagine that number is even more nowadays. So Bert spouts forth Yellowstone trivia. So here's some trivia. Yellowstone is named, after, uh, named for the Yellowstone River that runs through the park. The park covers 3,472 square miles with 96% located in the state of Wyoming, 
3% in Montana and 1% in Idaho. So it covers three states. It is larger than the states of Delaware and Rhode Island combined. Yellowstone sits atop of the world's largest volcanoes. Its first major eruption is believed to have occurred 2.1 million years ago and covered more than 5,790 square miles with ash, making it a supervolcano. Not to worry, even though it is still considered an active volcano, the last eruption was more than 70,000 years ago. Now Yellowstone experiences some 1,500 to 3,000 earthquakes annually. Most are so small they can't be felt. However, in 1959, an earthquake of a magnitude of 7.3 occurred and caused the interval between the eruptions of Old Faithful to lengthen significantly. The University of Utah operates more than 40 seismic stations to continuously record the Earth's movements both in and around the Yellowstone region. Their findings are reported to the National Park Service. Now the delightful smell of rotten eggs at Yellowstone's mud volcano is from hydrogen sulfide gas. And I did smell that and it does smell like rotten eggs. Now we know why, it's the hydrogen sulfide gas. Yellowstone has 300 active geysers and more than 290 waterfalls. Yellowstone has 466 miles of roads, 15 miles of boardwalk, and five park entrances. There are 92 trailheads accessing some 1,000 miles of trails. Yellowstone's weather is warm and sunny in the summer with daytime temperatures around 80 degrees and cold and snowy with temperatures seldom rising above 25 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. The park employs around 386 permanent year-round staff. That number increases to about 738 people during peak summer season. Most live in a dorm-like setting with one or two roommates. Three meals a day are provided in employee dining rooms. Being a park employee is one of the best ways to fully experience all it has to offer. The park is home to 67 species of mammals, 285 species of birds, six species of reptiles, five species of amphibians, and 16 species of fish. The Canada lynx and grizzly bears are two of the endangered species living there. Hunting in the park has been prohibited since 1883. Yellowstone is the only place in the U.S. where bison have lived continuously since prehistoric times. It's not unusual for traffic jams to occur as cars wait for the animals to cross the road. And that is a very true thing. And I think I have a picture of a bison. They are very big. Oh, here they are. These are bison. And they are very big. Now, when we took our camper, our motor home to Yellowstone and was going, taking rides through the roads, we would see big herds of bison. And you don't push them around. You just have to wait. And some of them just take their good old time. So you might be there a half hour. You might be there an hour. Um, and a lot of people getting pictures, but you just want to keep your distance. But it is really awesome to see because they're huge animals. Um... So now we're going to talk about Old Faithful. When people think of Yellowstone National Park, most, of the, most think of Old Faithful, named by members of the 1870 Washburn Expedition for the predictable intervals between its frequent eruptions. It continues to thrill and amaze all who come to see it. Geysers such as Old Faithful are relatively rare. It is estimated there are about a thousand of them in the world and about a half of them are found in Yellowstone. Geysers exist in just five countries, the United States, Russia, New Zealand, Iceland, and Chile. Geysers erupt when water confined at a depth beneath the Earth's surface becomes superheated by magma, which is molten rock, and blasts its way to the surface. Now here's some interesting facts about Old Faithful. I have a picture, it's a black and white. I'm gonna to try to share it with you. Maybe you can see it. 
Um, it is awesome to see, and they usually give you an idea of about the time that the guys are, or Old Faithful is going to shoot shoot off. And so people gather around and you watch, and it's pretty close to the times that they give. And it's awesome to see. Here's some interesting facts about Old Faithful. There are two kinds of geysers. The fountain geyser originates from pools of water, which make its eruptions look like spurting fountains. Cone geysers eruptions come from narrow cones or mounds on the Earth's surface. Water shoots out from a narrow opening at the top with a great deal of force. Old Faithful is a cone geyser. In the early days, Old Faithful was used to do laundry. Believe it or not, explorers and visitors to the park would throw their dirty clothes into the geyser in between eruptions and then wait for them to be shot back out clean as could be. They learned the hard way that woolen garments do not do well with this laundry method. Water erupting from Old Faithful is about 204 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature of the escaping steam can be hotter than 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Old Faithful currently erupts every 91 minutes on average, and it shoots water upward over 18 stories high. In the 1960s, the average was about 66 minutes, but over time, the intervals between eruptions have gotten longer. The National Park Service believes the change may be due to earthquake activity affecting the water system structure below the ground. You'll know when Old Faithful is about to erupt when little splashes and jets of water begin to appear. Eruptions last anywhere from one minute to 30 seconds to five minutes. Eruptions can spew forth 3,700 to 8,400 gallons of water. Um, the best place to view Old Faithful is from the boardwalk about 300 feet away. Visitors to the park can download an app that tells approximately when the next Old Faithful eruption will occur. While Old Faithful gets most of the attention, the biggest and highest geyser in the park, and in fact the tallest active geyser in the world, is Steamboat Geyser. It blasts water some 400 feet but the intervals between its eruptions are less predictable. The title for the tallest geyser in the world used to belong to the Wamunga geyser in New Zealand. It would blast water as high as 1,600 feet in the air. Sadly, a 1902 landslide in the area brought to an end, brought to an end its eruptions, the end to its eruptions. So I don't know if you've ever seen a geyser or, geyser or volcano, but the geysers are really awesome. Now this is about Mabel, a glamping we will go. What could be better? Now we can enjoy the great outdoors from the comfort of a large tent, complete with amenities found in a four-star hotel, such as a king-sized bed with luxurious linens and a bathroom complete with shower, sink, and flushable toilet, plus a sitting area, a wood stove, and a private deck. I only wish I'd known about the glamping option back in my camping days. After a good night's sleep under the stars and a hearty breakfast, we were ready to, were ready to explore Yellowstone. Here are some of the highlights we enjoyed seeing in addition to Old Faithful. Now, if you love wildlife, then you have to much to love at Yellowstone, where you will see moose, elk, fox, lynx, and the largest bison herd in the United States. Yellowstone is the only place in the nation where bison have lived since prehistoric times. An important rule to remember is you must stay at least 100 yards from all animals for their safety and for yours. If you come to see the wildlife, then you should also be on the lookout for wolves. Two of the best places to spot them are in the Lamar and Hayden Valleys. After having disappeared from the Yellowstone area for decades, 41 wild wolves from Canada and Montana were released into the park. The reintroduction of wolves resulted in a decrease in the elk population, which resulted in a flourishing of vegetation, allowing other species that had been on the decline to thrive. The wolf population fluctuates from year to year, and it correlates to available prey, most notably elk. Did you know Yellowstone had its own Grand Canyon? 
It was created by the erosion of the Yellowstone River. It is more than a thousand feet deep, 1,500 to 1,400 feet wide, and 20 miles long. It's one of the most photographed sites in the park. Yellowstone has four different types of geothermal features, and you find them when you're hiking through the park. There are geysers, there are hot springs, there are mud pots, and fumaroles, which are vents in the ground through which volcanic gas escapes into the atmosphere. The Old Faithful Inn was created by 29-year-old architect Robert Reamer. It was built in 1904 and has been a favorite place to stay ever since. Yellowstone Lake is the largest body of water in the park and is popular for pleasure boating and fishing. And Mammoth Hot Springs has a large employee housing community, which gives it a small town feel. You can learn about the history of the area at the Visitor Center and enjoy a hike around the springs. There are only a few designated hot springs where soaking is allowed, as most have water so hot they can cause severe burns or even death. So I want to show some pictures before I continue on. Um, I did show you the bison. This, this photograph here is Cook City, Montana, and it occupies a narrow valley between wilderness areas in Montana and Wyoming on the Beartooth Highway near the northeastern entrance to Yellowstone National Park. Beautifully surrounded by baronet, mineral, and Republic Mountains, the recreationist oasis is an American counterpart to villages of the Swiss Alps. Look how beautiful that is. Beautiful mountains, beautiful sky. Now this one here, this is the Roosevelt Arch, the north entrance to Yellowstone National Park. And that's on the very edge of the town of Gardner, Montana. Now this picture here, this is the Beartooth. The Beartooth is the sharp spike of rock on the distant horizon of the Beartooth Plateau. From this angle, it's aligned with a foreground outcropping of rock, which juts from a field of flowers on the nearby sheer cliff carved by US 212, alias the Beartooth Highway, as it connects Montana and Wyoming between Red Lodge and Yellowstone National Park. Here's another really beautiful picture of the mountains and the valleys and the snow cap. Here's a picture of Wyoming antelope. The swift American pronghorn is an interesting and curious animal. Here we have an elk, they call a wapiti. A prime bull elk in Yellowstone National Park. The elk is the second largest and one of the most handsome deer in the world. The adult bull weighs one half ton and is five feet tall at the shoulders. Here is black bears. There's a black bear, black bear mother and her cub. All right. Let's talk about Jellystone. How many of you remember Yogi Bear? I'm going to show you a little picture here. It's black and white. Remember Yogi Bear and Boo Boo, his little side, side counterpart? If you watch cartoons from 1961 and to 1962, you're probably familiar with the Yogi Bear show, created by William Hanna and Joseph Barbara. It featured two brown bears, Yogi, who was smarter than the average bear, and his sidekick, Boo Boo. The personality of Yogi reportedly was based on the Ed Norton character from the TV show, The Honeymooners, played by Art Carney. Yogi's mission in life was to steal picnic baskets from unsuspecting campers, much to the displeasure of Ranger Smith. The similarities between the fictional National Park of Jellystone and real Yellowstone National Park were quite obvious with such things such as Old Faithful Geyser. It's fun to note that there are actually some 79 Jellystone Park camp resorts located in 30 states and three provinces that you can visit. Each campground is required to have a Yogi Bear theme. 
It's interesting that in the early history of Yellowstone, visitors were encouraged to feed the bears. The bears learned how to beg for food, and tourists happily had their pictures taken with them. Before 1970, garbage was hauled to a dump in the park, and when dusk fell, the bears, which were black bears and grizzly bears, would amble out of the woods and they'd head straight to the dump. The park erected seating for visitors to sit and watch the bears foraging in the task trash and fighting over choice findings. The showings were so popular that people had trouble finding a place to park. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 1920, it was estimated that there were 40 bears at the dump, and a decade later, there were over 250. <clears throat> Whereas the bears were loving their free meals, the practice was a recipe for disaster for both bears and people. With boundaries blurred between humans and bears, there were injuries to both. With the advent of World War II and few, fewer visitors to the park, the public viewing of bears at the dumps was discontinued. Today, no food items are allowed anywhere. Food can attract the attention of bears, and stiff fines are imposed on anyone who doesn't follow the rules. Um... Now, talking about cookouts, people have been cooking over fires ever since they figured out how to start one. For early explorers to Yellowstone, there were plentiful bison and elk to be hunted and fish to be caught and cooked over the campfire, along with edible vegetation. Back then, campfire cooking was a matter of survival, and today it's an adventure and a way to prepare a meal. Here are some successful tips on campfire cooking. You want to build the right fire. Always build your fire in an open space away from trees or other vegetation. Only create a fire in authorized areas, ideally when existing fire pits or outdoor grills. Ideally with existing fire pits or outdoor grills. Look for dried moss and leaves for tinder and small pieces of dry wood for kindling. Light the tinder and add the kindling. Once it's burning well, Add the bigger fallen branches and logs to keep the fire going. Now you want to make sure you have the right gear to cook. Aluminum or cast iron pots and pans are best. Aluminum foil comes in handy for both cooking and wrapping leftovers. You'll need bottled water for both cooking and for cleaning up. Now you want to make sure that you cook the right foods. You use caution with foods that produce hot drippy fat when they cook, such as duck, steak, or bacon as they could start a flare up of the fire. My favorite cookout foods include hot dogs and hamburgers, chicken, corn on the cob, potato salad, coleslaw, and of course, s'mores. What other foods do you like to eat at a campfire cookout? All of those are making me hungry. Then the last thing is you wanna make sure that you clean up right away. You wanna make sure the fire is completely extinguished and the ashes are thoroughly wet and cold. Pack up all uneaten foods and containers and store away from your sleeping area in a secure place to avoid an unwelcome visit from a hungry bear. Now, just a side note on this, when we were camping, I had made pancake batter and put it in a Tupperware container and I had it in the cooler. The cooler was shut and was outside of the camper. We heard scruffling in the middle of the night and we got up and looked with a flashlight and there were raccoons around our camp. They had opened our cooler they had opened our Tupperware, and they were dipping their claws in our pancake batter. So needless to say, we had cereal the next morning and not pancakes. All right, let's see if there's anything else that I can share here. Um, I'll maybe just finish a little bit here about the park information. Um, when the first visitors to Yellowstone tried to report what they saw, news magazines responded, Thank you, but we do not print fiction. Peppered with colorful hot springs, mud pots, and breathtaking waterfalls, it's easy to understand how one might think it otherworldly. Nothing else on earth is quite like Yellowstone, and there is something for everyone, from children to grandparents. Established in 1872 and located primarily in Wyoming, Yellowstone National Park was America's first national park, and this, to this day, Yellowstone remains one of the country's most popular national parks with millions of annual visitors. 
It expands almost 3,500 miles and extends into parts of Montana and Idaho, making it one of the largest national parks in the U.S. Yellowstone National Park sits on, a on top of a dormant volcano and is home to more geysers and hot springs than any other place on Earth. Wonders abound at this truly unique national park from sites like the Yellowstone Grand Canyon to wildlife like America's largest buffalo herd, grizzly bears, and wolves. Approximately 50% of the world's hydrothermal features are at Yellowstone National Park, creating an effect that makes the ground appear to be on fire. The most famous of all the geysers is, you know, Old Faithful one of the most popular and recognized national wonders in the U.S. So I hope that you've enjoyed Yellowstone, learning about Yellowstone today. Um, they, they have park guided tours from Jackson Hole or West Yellowstone. There's scenic and uh, wildlife tours, and there's the ultimate wildlife safari. So you just want to get on Yellowstone National Park on their website to get all the information on the cost and the trip so you can make your reservations. So I hope you get to go out and visit Yellowstone, and I hope you've enjoyed this information. I know I enjoyed sharing it with you, and I also enjoyed visiting it. Take care and have a good day.